After the Committee of 100 recommended replacement of our aging pipe organ, the organ committee studied available options and recommended a vintage pipe organ as a preferred choice. We, need, we next selected a consultant to guide us as we acquired a vintage organ to meet our needs and chose a company to rebuild and install the pipe organ. We are very fortunate to have with us tonight our organ consultant, Dr. John Schwant, and his graduate assistant, Adam Hagan. Dr. Schwant is an associate professor of organ at the University of Oklahoma School of Music and the director of the American Organ Institute. He not only teaches organ, but as an accomplished organist and clinician and has built, repaired, and tuned organs over many years. I could go on, but to summarize, I will paraphrase an old Bear Bryant saying, John knows organs. <laughs> well, it took you a while, thank you. <laughs> Those of us who have worked with him are delighted with the considerable skills John brings to the table. Dr. Schwant spent Saturday, Sunday, and today studying our sanctuary. Dr. Schwant will make a brief presentation tonight to help us understand more about our organ project. When he is finished, he will take a few of your specific questions. The handout with questions and answers is available, and we can pass those out. They will answer many of your general questions. We are making a video, as I said, so please raise your hand should you wish to ask a question or speak after he makes his presentation and use the mic that I or Sonny will bring and offer to you. Dr. Schwant, thanks for being here. The floor is yours. It's my privilege to be with you. I want to thank each and every one of you. This is an amazing congregation. It's been a joy for myself um, and my student, Adam Pagin, who's uh, with me this, this trip uh, and hopefully on successive trips to help guide you on this journey um, the first thing I like to tell every committee and every church is I don't have all the answers. Um, I'm a teacher, so I love to teach. My goal and aim is to help facilitate and provide you with all the information you need so you can discern with a prayerful meditation what you feel is best for your congregation. Um, I will always answer honestly whether it's the answer you want to hear or not. You can, you can bet on that, that I will be as clear and as honest as I can be the whole step of the way. But thank you so much for your support of the organ committee and for entrusting me to help you, uh, as well as taking part in the education of the future. I'm very passionate about this. And so for you to allow uh, one of my students, Adam is a, an ABD doctoral student, and uh, as you get to know him, you'll realize that he is a very fine consultant in the making. So thank you for allowing him to participate. Um, very quickly then, I'm going to summarize where we are and where you might go. Uh, from dream to dedication, uh, having a, a new voice, and you'll hear me call the pipe organ the voice of your congregation. It's like a birthing process. It does take more than nine months. When I wear my shirt that says the American Organ Institute, invariably I get asked about organ transplants. And they ask, so what kind of organs do you transplant? Sometimes 10 tons. Sometimes, what? <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a fun line of work. From dream to dedication, it takes a lot of hours of labor on the part of you, on the part of committee members, organ builders, contractors, you name it, until finally you get to dedicate and celebrate your new voice. So how do we get there? Well, your organ committee has already been hard at work, and they have decided on a specific path for you to go, and that is a vintage pipe organ. How many of you understand what that means? Raise your hand. Good, okay. That means a pipe organ that is older, it's already been built, um, and has either been discarded or want, is going to be discarded, and you will take it over and refashion it into a new pipe organ. Why now? Why at this point in time? Why get an old organ when you can get a new organ? Well, Part of, part of it is resources. It is true that some of the raw materials used in organs, especially in the early 20th century, are no longer available as they once were. So uh, you'll hear me talk about this as a green option. But before we get there, priorities, worship, 
to me, and so this is my opinion, and I hope that you will join me in this priority, is worship. Having a, a quality pipe organ is an investment in your worship. Pipe organs, good ones, undergird and inspire and support congregational singing. Corporate worship means worship that we accomplish together. You have a superb sanctuary with acoustics where not only can you see that you are a member of the community of faith, but you can hear that you're a community of faith. And as a worshiping community, you pray together and you sing together. St. Augustine says, when we sing, we pray twice. So it's important. You've, you've already proven excellence in that regard. Now you need an instrument to undergird and support that. Um, a, a pipe organ, the likes of which that your organ committee envisions for you, is something that everyone can feel in every corner of the room. How many of you in this room have ever had an experience with a magnificent pipe organ in a magnificent room where you are literally awed into silence because you can feel it in every bone of your body? Aha, uh -huh. a good number of you. I wish all of you could see how many hands went up. Great. Um, you two can have this here. The current organ, and I, and I say this at every venue at which I'm privileged to speak, I don't talk about the bad organ or the poor organ. This organ has served this congregation faithfully, so give thanks for it, but it's time to send it on its way. Um, giving thanks. Uh, it is, in my objective opinion, inadequate, with the, especially these two overriding criteria. It does not have the capacity uh, within its design or size to set into vibration your magnificent room. Um, you have been blessed with an absolutely terrific organist who works very hard. You don't realize how hard she works every week to try to make the illusion that this organ is greater than it is. Uh, it's a testament to her skill, not the instrument. So give thanks for Mary Ruth. Yes. Yes. Through the use of recycled pipework, uh, constructed of materials and alloys no longer available, like uh, a special annealed zinc, lead, and tin, wood, such as California sugar pine, those slow growth trees which were uh, formerly readily available, aren't anymore. Um, the, use of recycled pipework from old organs, you can consider a green option, and it does represent a significant savings in cost. Uh, the manufacture, the creation of pipe organs is a very expensive venture, uh, largely because of labor. Um, with the materials already existing, you will save a considerable amount of money. So, the acquisition of a vintage pipe organ, or organs, and we'll talk about organs, but make no mistake, we're talking about a single instrument in two locations, in the back of the sanctuary and in the front. You will have the acoustical version of surround sound in a way that you have never experienced before. This is both financially responsible and advantageous, as I mentioned. A spiritual pipe organ responds to a theological call. This is a priority. God calls us to excellence in all things. Offer the first fruits, not the rotten fruits or the day-old bread, the first fruits. John Wesley, and now I, I have to admit, I'm a lifelong Lutheran, but uh, having worked in a few Methodist churches, I have grown to uh, a certain fondness for, for John Wesley and his views on worship. And he instructs the congregants to sing lustily with great spirit and understanding. Now, I... Uh, and someone usually says, with all due respect, they're about to insult you. So please don't accept this as an insult because you are all wonderful people, uh, prayerful, and you have a magnificent congregation. But I couldn't help but notice that when I was singing with you on Sunday, I felt like I was the only one. And then I found myself singing softer and softer and softer, trying to save. And so I found out what you go through. You may not be consciously aware of it, but I can assure you, once you have a voice that undergirds and supports you, there's going to be a vibrancy that you're going to feel in worship that you do not yet know. And you can think of it as fulfilling John Wesley's instructions for worship. Building the voice 
of Dunwoody United Methodist Church. The pipe organ will be here long after all of us are gone. Its voice imbued with the sacredness that you offer every time you pray and meditate in that sanctuary will be present at the births, at the marriages, at the celebrations, weekly worship, and at the deaths of all the faithful. It is the voice, the very voice, of this local congregation, joining with all the choirs of angels in heaven. Mission and ministry, you have more than proven to me uh, in spades uh, as I've uh, walked around your facility and seen the activity here that's apparent seven days of the week. You understand mission and ministry. Inspired worship, inspired by great preaching, which you already have, a magnificent choir, which you already have, a fantastic choir director, a fantastic organist, and the list goes on. Once you add a pipe organ that matches all of this excellence, once that's added to the mix, you will have inspired worship that will benefit mission and ministry. Worship is the one time each week that all of the groups, because there are many groups at Dunwoody, it's the one time where all of you are gathered, um, united in the spirit to sing, uh, and to pray and to contemplate God's grace and mercy. Comprehensive excellence leaves all inspired and empowered to continue their individual ministerial call. So what I'm trying to say is when you really get worship right, everything else gets even better. The process, in brief, I have recommended to the organ committee to enter into a letter of intent with their chosen organ builder. What that does is commits the organ builder to Dunwoody and Dunwoody to the organ builder's uh, production process timeline. <coughs> vintage pipe organs, per the recommendation of the organ committee, vintage pipe organs will be sought out as the appropriate means for providing Dunwoody with a new instrument. Even though the pipes are old, they will be redesigned, reconfigured to fit Dunwoody's sanctuary and your worship needs. Um, so we have to identify and procure the appropriate vintage pipe organs. Uh, this process has already begun. Then you will sign, uh, you would enter into a purchase agreement with the current owners of the vintage organs so that, that Dunwoody would purchase these instruments. They would become your property. Then would be a design phase contract Considering the size of your sanctuary and then the size of the organs, it's going to be a very uh, detailed process to design all the components and everything to be in harmony with the sanctuary. Uh, there's a lot of people to coordinate so that we'll have a separate design phase contract with the organ builder. The sanctuary renovation design would be accomplished concurrently with the organ design. Please understand that there will be some renovations needed into, uh, for in the sanctuary to accommodate the new organ. And remember, one organ, how many locations? Two. Got it. Brilliant. Uh, during this phase, visual case designs will be determined. These old organs, uh, most of the old organs that we can find do not have cases with them. This is all to the good. You want the appearance of the organ to look like it's al al always been here. So that will be accomplished during this phase. Um, many hours are invested in the work leading to this, hence the need for a separate contract concerning the design. Then uh, you would have a contract with your chosen organ builder that would stipulate all the details concerning the construction, rebuilding, and installation of the new organ with the selected organ builder. The, your board of trustees will oversee the contract for the sanctuary renovations needed for the organ. The total budget for the organ project will include all associated costs, procurement, design, construction, sanctuary renovations, so that when the, the, the figure is determined, it will be a turnkey figure. It will include all of the associated costs. Uh, establishing a potential timeline, emphasis on potential, uh, all of this based on the availability of funds. Um, the entire project, the gestation period of this new baby, a big one though it is, um, could take uh, approximately three years, again, uh, with the availability of funds 
if, if it happens quickly, it can, it can happen in less time or more time. This is just approximate to give you an idea. Uh, we have a goal of purchasing vintage pipe organs uh, by this December. That's a realistic goal, and so I ask for your prayers and uh, support in that discernment process. And that is the end of my presentation. Questions? Can I, do I have any questions? Anybody raise your hand? David. Hi. Of, of the period of three years that you were talking about mm -hmm. the birthing process or the gestation process, yes. what, uh, or how long will the sanctuary renovation and um, installation of the organ take once, once the organ is ready to be put in? Okay, the, the question was, uh, did you all hear the question? Okay. Once the organ is ready to be installed, and with the coordination of the efforts of, of, of everyone, the organ committee, the trustees who's overseeing the, the renovations, assuming all goes according to plan, and that the space is ready for the organ crew to arrive, an organ of this size could take uh, anywhere from one to two months to install. Then there is a, a, a lengthier process after that where each and every pipe is voiced and tuned to be at a, an appropriate level in the room. So there will be organ people taking up residence here um, for a while. Mm -hmm. Battery dead? No, it will. There it goes. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. There we go. Hey. Yay. Ed, you got me? I think I know the answer to this. I've had a couple of folks, but I'd love to hear your, your answer to this. The vintage pipe organ, and I, I'm certain there's people here in our church that don't understand what you're saying when you say the materials that are not available here mm -hmm. today, present day, uh, they've been used up. Is what I'm hearing you. Yeah, I think I, I made yes. a point. Can you give us, uh, ex expand on that? That's like the metals and the woods. And is this something we'll be able to see? I know we'll be able to hear it and feel it. But uh, how do we, because it's a sizable amount of, of investment in these materials we can't get anymore. We, they're not available. What I'm, would you expand on that in sure. detail? Um, I'll answer your question in two parts. First, new pipe organs are being manufactured. New organ pipes are being made. But it is true that the materials that were used, especially in the early 20th century, the quality uh, we, we can no longer get. Um, the, the zinc, specifically. Uh, there are a lot of organs. Uh, the organ industry used to get zinc that was mined in this country. Now they can only get it from Germany. The alloy is, is not as good as it was, so that over a period of time, the new pipes are collapsing. Most in fact, I would say 98% of the pipes of the organ you will not see. When you can see them is when the organ is being installed. Uh, be, so here's an advantage of the long period of time that it takes to install the organ. If you drop by for visits, even if it's once, once per week, you'll have uh, an opportunity to see everything that's behind what we call the facade. Uh, the front pipes in an organ case are only those uh, in fact, it's usually just a fraction of the pipes of the organ. Those are the only ones that you see for display. The bulk of the organ is behind. And um, a great deal of this pipe organ, the pipes of this organ, will be behind what we call swell shutters. If you look in back of your current sanctuary, there are two boxes that have louvers that open and shut. There will be more pipes that will be behind these kinds of swell louvers that you won't be able to see. The wood, yes. Um, pipe organ builders now are using largely poplar for their wooden organ pipes. It's an acceptable species of wood. It's readily available. Um, it's not quite as good or as thick as the California sugar pine that was used in organ pipes from uh, the 19th century all the way to the mid-20th century. It has to do with tone. Um, also, 
Uh, this morning we were privileged to be at the Fox Theater and Sonny saw for himself some of the sugar pine. The planks, some of them 32 feet long, are straight with no knots. So, yeah. Uh, yes, a couple of things came to mind as I was looking at or listening to your presentation. Number one, uh, with the uh, sanctuary renovation, will it impact seating at all? That's, that's the first question I had. Or, or impact, or number two is, can we anticipate any unseen consequences that we wouldn't know about? And the third part of the question is, what is the difference in cost between a new organ and a vintage organ? Okay, so three parts. One, will the new organ negatively affect seating? Absolutely not. You will not lose one seat in the church, nor will the choir lose one seat in the gallery. That's the, that's the, 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 the part of a, in the design process, but we've already ascertained that that will not negatively affect the seating in the sanctuary. Um, part two, what was the second question? I know the third one. Pardon? Oh, the unforeseen consequences. During the design phase, assuming that everyone is working in, in concert, the trustees, the, re the renovations committee, the organ committee, that's their job to make sure, and you've got a lot of good people that are from this congregation that are asking very good questions. Um, one of them standing there, one of them sitting right there, and there's more over here. Um, that's our job to, and that's also why you have me here. I'm, I'm the paid bad cop to ask the questions, what if this? Um, I have yet to be part of an organ project where when this process has been undertaken in a very open and detailed way that there are no nasty surprises. Yeah. Of course, I, I can't guarantee that 100% because there is human error, but there's no reason to believe that uh, this process, there's nothing, oh, let, me, let me rephrase that. I don't, in, I don't personally anticipate anything being done in your sanctuary for the organ that would affect it in such a way that all of a sudden you get a crack in the ceiling or you know, something like that. Cost difference, yes, the third question. The organ that we're envisioning for your sanctuary, if we were to attempt to build it all new, and you notice I word, use the word attempt, because the truth is we can't. We cannot equal the, the quality of brass and the reed tongues, the materials, the, the sheer size and scope of the organs we're looking at. But even if we tried, it would cost approximately $12 million. Right. That is not the price we're talking about. Okay. We're talking about a fraction of that price. But that gives you an idea um, of, of the scope of such a thing. Um, an all new pipe organ, in fact, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a new organ planned for St. Thomas Church in New York City. Um, it's about the same size that this one would be in the number of ranks. The price for that one, actually no, it's a little smaller, is a little over $8 million. A pipe organ is the single most expensive item any church ever owns. Did I answer the question? we got time for one more question. I'm just curious. I don't understand. The vintage organ is $100,000. I mean, um, I mean this, I'm reading your, the line here, and it says it would cost about $4 million to install it, but the actual organ is $100,000. Is okay. that right? The so what's, where's, like, is it, does it cost that much then? What's the difference of money. The difference, sure. Um, there, and, and please understand that we have not yet arrived at, at the final choice. Um, the $100,000 figure is for one plan that uh, involves the purchase of two vintage pipe organs. If you're going out and buying an old pipe organ, um, you're going to get it for much cheaper than a new one because these vintage pipe organs are old. Most of them are not playable. There's a great deal of time and labor that goes into restoring them, refurbishing the mechanism, <coughs> oftentimes having a new console, that's where all the keyboards and the pedals are, um, that is time and labor intensive. So that the cost for purchasing 
an existing organ is far lower than the cost of rebuilding it. After the rebuilding process is accomplished, you have an instrument that is better than new. Does that answer you? Pardon? It's all labor. It's all labor. Yeah, it's labor because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for Dunwoody, we're talking about two consoles, not just one. Because remember, you have one organ in two locations. The vision of your organ committee, and it's a good one, that you would have a console in the back like you have now, and a, an identical one in the front, so that when the choir and the orchestra is in front, the organist can be down where they are to control all the organ. John, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome.